Now at quasi steady state we know that the biomass concentration is not changing with time. It was a variable and this is now at steady state so no change dx by dt is 0. However, the amount of biomass in a fed batch process will keep changing with time because the volume is changing. So, let us see how does it change. So, let us assume the total biomass as x t at any given time t and we know at quasi steady state dx by dt is equals to 0. Now, this x can be written as x t which is the amount of cells in the numerator divided by the volume at that time. Let us assume it is v. So, now dx can be expanded as x t by v as given here. Now, this differential x t by v has been further expanded because x t and v both are variables. So, then it has been further expanded as v multiplied by dx t by dt minus x t times dv by dt and divided by v square. This is how the differential is done for the two variables x t by v and we know that this is 0 for quasi steady state. So, this corresponds to so the numerator is also equals to 0. So, therefore, your dx t by dt will become equal to x t by v from the numerator here will become x t by v dv by dt. Now, dv by dt can be replaced as f and this is x t by v is some concentration. Now, assuming as I said earlier the purpose of the batch is to maximum cell concentration in the fed batch process. So, let us assume it to be x m which will be what then at constant yield of the biomass. Let us assume by x by s which is theoretical maxima. So, in terms of that we can write it as y x by s into s naught. This can be the maximum biomass concentration achieved and S naught was the initial substrate. So, this means S is nearly equal to 0 which is quasi steady state. As the substrate is coming in it is getting consumed. So, there is no net substrate then only you can assume maximum biomass production. So, your S residual is nearly equal to 0 for this maximum biomass possible. So, now this equation can be written in the form of y x y s s naught into f. So, now if we integrate x t which was d x t by d t. So, now with the limits of x t naught and x t. So, x t naught is the initial amount of biomass present s naught is the feed substrate concentration, f is the constant feed flow rate. So, then this becomes a function of time with f y x by s s naught and x t naught known. y x by s into s naught x t naught would be what? x m into v naught plus x m f t. So, this x m into v naught was x t naught which was the initial amount of biomass where at the initial point where the substrate concentration was s naught volume was v naught. So, the cell concentration was x t naught by multiplied by v naught. We will end up in the same scenario if we do a balance for the rate limiting substrate. Let us see it here. 
this is the rate of accumulation of the substrate at any time t which is equal to the inlet substrate concentration the rate at which the substrate is coming inside the reactor and the rate at which the substrate is getting utilized. So, this is a substrate balance equation S t is the amount of substrate at time t, X t was the amount of biomass at time t and S naught is the substrate concentration and F is the volumetric flow rate. So, at quasi steady state all the substrate is getting consumed. So, there is no significant level of substrate which can get accumulated. So, then in that case your F s naught, so this goes to 0 and your F s naught will become equal to mu x t by y x by s. So, if F s naught is equal to mu x t by y x by s, then d x t by d t can be written as x t by v d v by d t. So, we are multiplying and dividing. So, then this becomes x m into f which is f multiplied by x m was y x by s multiplied by s naught. So, now this equation x t is equals to x t naught plus y x by s s naught f t this demonstrates that once the quasi steady state has reached this is how the biomass although the biomass concentration is not going to change with time inside the reactor, but the amount of biomass with time is going to change inside the reactor as a function given here where x t naught is the start during the quasi once the quasi steady state has reached. So, at this point once the quasi steady state has reached the biomass assuming it is your maximum biomass concentration and then we continue to operate the system for the maximum biomass concentration all the time. So, that it does not change with time at steady state. So, your x t naught is your volume starting volume at quasi steady state multiplied by the maximum biomass concentration which is y x by s into s naught. So, this is the initial amount of biomass once the quasi steady state has reached and now with time at quasi steady state this is how x m multiplied by f t this is how your x t is going to change with time. Now, let us do a substrate balance. So, if we do a substrate balance this is the rate at which the substrate is getting accumulated inside the reactor. This is the rate at which the substrate is coming inside the reactor and this is the rate at which the substrate is getting utilized inside the reactor. At quasi steady state the amount of substrate coming inside the reactor is instantly getting utilized and there is no net substrate getting accumulated inside the reactor. Hence your d s t by d t can be assumed as 0 whatever substrate is getting coming inside is getting consumed. So, there is no more accumulation of substrate hence your f s naught becomes equal to the term mu x t by y x by s as shown above here. Now, let us formulate how the product concentration is going to change in a fed batch process at quasi steady state. Now, the total product concentration or the amount of total product would be let us assume p t the product concentration is p. So, the amount can be obtained by multiplying p times v, v is the volume at time t. Now, the specific rate of product formation 
for most secondary metabolite is said to be constant. The amount of product formed cell or biomass per time. The amount the rate at which the product is forming is equal to specific product rate multiplied by the amount of biomass at that time. This is what QP stands for. So, therefore, if in place of Xt we expand from the previous derivation, we can write being a quasi steady state, it will be a function of time Xm and F assuming that the fed batch process is running at its maximum biomass concentration at quasi steady state. Now, with the limits that at the beginning of the quasi steady state, the, pro the amount of product is Pt0 and this beginning of the quasi steady state, the time is assumed to be 0. If we integrate now this equation and put the limits, it will become Pt is equal to Pt0 plus so, with respect to t, the t has been taken common, let us do this for clarity. So, the equation was dPt by dt is equal to Qp times xt. So, if we integrate and put the limits Pt naught dPt is equals to it, this is specific product formation rate which I said. So, we can assume that and in place of x t it has been expanded as v naught times f t multiplied by x m and the limits as t naught to t and this t naught is 0. So, here this will become from here we can write it as p t minus p t naught is equal to q p. So, this x m is brought near to q p and this becomes t square by 2. So, the t and this was v naught into t. So, the t has also been taken out common. So, now I hope you can understand how we have reached to this equation. Now, further simplifying it rather than keeping in terms of the amount of product, we will reconvert it into the concentrations because this is what we are measuring inside the reactor. So, in terms of product concentration, this will become equal to P is equals to. So, what we will do? We will divide it throughout with a volume V. <coughs> So, this now becomes equal to P uh, which we may call as rather than saying it as P T because then it this becomes amount. So, we will call it as P now the concentration at time T and this goes to the right hand side So, P T can be written as initial product concentration multiplied by the initial volume which is known divided by the V plus Q P X M V naught by V. So, V has been taken inside the brackets and this F by V then becomes D by 2 multiplied by. Now, that you have understood this equation from this itself as I said we will divide the entire equation by V to make it as a function of product concentration. So, this becomes product concentration at time t and P t naught further can be written in terms of product concentration as P naught V naught as given here divided by V because the entire equation has been divided by V and this V has been brought inside the brackets. So, the F by V which came here we know D is equals to F by V. So, F by V has been replaced as D here and rest is kept as it is. So, we end up in this equation. Now, further expansion V we know is a function of time 
for a constant feed flow rate system assuming the constant flow rate as f. So, it has been further written as v naught plus f t here throughout the equation. So, now we know how the product concentration will change with time for a quasi steady state fed batch process.